In this tutorial, we're going to go over how to create a drawing in Fusion 360. And the drawing that we are going to create is of the Titan 7M. Very first thing that we're going to do is we're going to look at the Titans of CNC drawings to kind of give us an idea of what our drawing is going to look like. The big thing that I want you to kind of go away with is if you look at our datum location, our datum location is actually in this upper left hand corner where there's no geometry at. So that's going to be something kind of not really tricky, but something that we need to be mindful of is everything that is stated is out of this theoretical center up here. Moving down to sheet number two, we have some center locations of our bolt holes and we have some call outs for our counter, counter bore here. And then lastly, we have um, this cutaway portion of our part. So let's jump over to Fusion 360 and let's create a drawing. Very first thing that you need to be have up in Fusion 360 is your Titan 7M. And then we're going to change our workspace and go over to the drawing workspace. We are using our, our full assembly here. And then the template that we're going to be using is the template that is in another video. And then press OK. Very first thing that Fusion 360 is going to want to set for us is our front view. Because this part is actually kind of on the small side, we're going to change it orientation to Let's look at maybe what a, a two to one looks like. Eh, let's look at a, a one to one. I think a one to one would be sufficient for this particular part. So we're going to land this here. And we're going to uh, leave visible and hidden edges on since we have those counterboard holes and then press OK. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to land our top view and our isometric view. So drawing views to projected. We're going to click on our base view here, drag up for our top view and then over for our isometric view and then enter to lock it in. We're going to change the visibility of our isometric view by double left clicking on it and going to shaded with only visible lines. Now that we have this in place, we're going to come down and let's dimension our front view. I'm actually going to take my front view and drag it down a little bit. And we're going to add in our dimensions. We're going to go up to ordinate dimension. We're going to come in right off this corner here and drag out our datum. We're going to set our top edge here and reference off of the extension line from our datum. We're going to reference off the bottom of our counter bore and put a little bend in here, the bottom of that web there. And then lastly, the bottom of our part. Once you have your dimensions in, we're going to right click and press OK. Notice that our annotations are for only two trailing digits. We're going to change our annotation settings in the bottom center. We're going to turn display trailing zeros on. And then we're going to change our linear dimension precision to the thousands column. With that in mind, we're going to change our datum location primary precision by double clicking on it and dropping down the menu to zero and then close out that drop that, that menu there. Now that we have our vertical dimensions here, we're going to come in and we're going to change some of these. So for example, this one that's 315 thousandths. Um, I'm actually going to label this as our counterboard depth. So I'm going to insert a symbol 
and insert another symbol. Actually, instead of putting the counterbore symbols in there, I'm just going to label it for counterbore. And then close that out. And I'm actually going to put in the quantity. Uh, there are four holes. And then that way, everybody knows who that looks at this drawing that that's the depth of our counter bore. Coming over on this side, we're going to label our chamfers. We're going to use a text with the leader. We're going to reference off of here. And the text that we're going to put in here is 2x 50 thousandths. 45 degrees chamfer. We're going to repeat our leader. And this one, we're going to come off the top here, kind of place it in the same area. And this one, we're going to put TYP 10 thousandths at 45 degrees. chamfer. And then close that out. All right. Now that our front view is fully defined, let's take a look at our top view. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, the hardest part is going to be able to get our datum over here in this upper left hand corner. We're going to go to ordinate dimension. We're going to hover over the endpoint of this radius here. And we're going to hover there for a couple seconds until we see endpoint appear. Then we're going to do it over here on this side of the part. And we're going to drag our mouse up until we see those green dashed lines kind of intersect. We're going to left click there at that location and then drag our mouse up and that will land our datum location. So just like before, we're going to double click on this, change our primary precision to zero. And notice we have our datum. We're going to go back to ordinate dimension. This time we're going to reference off of the end of that radius there. We're going to click there and drag our mouse out. And then that will give us our, our vertical dimensions. From here, it's as simple as just clicking on some geometry and just dragging our mouse over. We're going to go off that end point of that radius, drag our mouse over land that dimension coming off this radius drag our mouse over coming off of the radius over here this endpoint and when we've got this one and Let's do the one at the very bottom. And how about this one? Just like that. Now, now that we've got our vertical dimensions for the outside of our part, let's look at some of the dimensions for inside here. We're going to drag our mouse up, and unfortunately I clicked on the wrong line. So make sure you're clicking on the innermost portion of their chamfer. There we go. Same thing, click on the outermost portion here. 
and then on the outside of the part like that. There is some, uh, like a theoretical location here. We can see if we can pick that up. Um, this one's going to be a little bit challenging. We're going to hover over this endpoint and then this endpoint here and kind of move our mouse over to this location. And you'll see that those green lines intersect. We're going to click on that location and drag our mouse over. And that will give us the theoretical location of where that point was before we put that fillet there. And then we're going to repeat that for our vertical measurement. We're going to drag that over. And then this one we're going to actually place right about here. We'll have to drop our other measurement down. Like that. Actually, this one I'm going to put a slight bend on it here. So it reads a little bit better. We're going to repeat that for down here at this point. So back to ordinate dimension. Referencing off the endpoints of our arc here. This time we're going to drag our mouse in. Right about here. And then there's that location. Now that we have our linear dimensions in place, we're going to put some center marks on these bolt holes so we can come back after the fact and measure those. We're going to click on the one of these circles here and then land a center mark. The one I'm, I was clicking on was the innermost circle there. And then we can go back and add in our ordinate dimensions for these. I click here, reference off the center, click on the center and drag our measurement going up on all of these. Our print's looking pretty good. The only thing that I, I really don't like is notice all of our extension lines are kind of crossing over each other. Um, what we're going to do is add in some uh, dimension breaks. So we're going to go to dimensions, down to dimension break. I'm going to click on the lines that are all kind of overlapping each other like this. And then I'm going to go to add a break and then press OK. And notice now Fusion 360 went in there and kind of put some line segments in there so they're not overlapping each other. Now that we have this done, we're going to put in our thread callouts. We're going to go and to text with the leader. We're going to reference off this uh, this hole over here and then drag our mouse out. These particular threads, or excuse me, these does not have threads in it. It's a through hole. So we're going to type in 4x and our diameter, or excuse me, our counter bore the diameter symbol, and then the diameter of our 
counterbore is 380 thousandths and 315 thousandths deep. I'm going to add that GD and T symbol in. I'm going to add another space in there. I'm going to hold down shift enter. Then I'm also going to type in the diameter of the hole. Oops. Just like that. And then I'm going to close this out. Looks like we're missing a couple other dimensions. We're looking for a dimension from this web thickness here. I'm going to click on that and drag my dimensions out. So I'm going to put this back here and I'll drop my whole dimensions down a little bit. Back to dimensions, and then this one we're going to choose the width here, which is 125 thousandths. This was our original offset. And I'm just going to label that as our offset, and that will indicate to the next person who's making it that you're going to use an offset feature. We're going to call out our radius over here, so D on the keyboard. And we're kind of getting a lot of geometry over here. So I'm actually going to bring my radius down at this location over here to kind of free up our space. Then I'm going to choose this radius here. This particular radius here is typical uh, five times. And then we have another dimension here. This was going to be on this radius. And we're also going to change that to typical five times. Lastly, we have um, this radius in here, and then we have these two radiuses here. So D again on the keyboard, coming off here, I'm going to drag my mouse over here. I really don't like overlapping things, so we may have to move these around at the end. D again on the keyboard, coming off this radius, and... See how these are going to kind of cross over each other? I really don't like that, but... It will do for right now. And with that in mind, I may want to move this radius out of the way. And let's see if we can put this one at the top. And that will kind of better organize my workspace. That's looking better. The only other thing I got to do is I'm going to click on this and drag my front view down a little bit. And then that way I can drag my radius into this spot. And then I'm going to put a slight little bend in these measurements over here to kind of give my 
my radius some room to breathe here. That's looking pretty good. We've got everything called out. The only thing I want to do is I want to move my front view down a little bit. And maybe move it over a little. Um, notice our counter bore here. Um, I'm actually going to put some bends in here and kind of reorganize this space. I'm going to bend this a little bit more and then drop this one down. That's looking really good there. This is a good opportunity. Double check your measurements, double check your prints, and make sure you have everything indicated. I do see one error here is I forgot to change the primary precision up here. Let's change that to zero. And double check to make sure your print is fully defined. And gotta remember the, the reason for a, dra a drawing or a blueprint is so you can hand it to somebody and they can recreate this part. So if you have dimensions missing off of your part, uh, that means that a person cannot make this part without assuming things. So other than that, this, full, this is concluding our tutorial on how to make a drawing for the Titan 7M.